It was just one of those things. When I was a kid growing up, all of my mates, including myself, would spend a lot of time building ramps for us to jump stuff on our bikes, which was normally just a configuration of a couple of dodgy old bricks and a plank of wood. What could possibly go wrong? My 10 year old son is going through that phase right now. He saved up all his money and he's bought himself a nice looking rig. So I think now is the perfect time to up the ante just a little and make a video to show you guys how to make a really cool looking kicker ramp. That's classic, simple, lightweight and perfect for the beginner. I might even have a crack at using it myself. Hmm, <laughs> maybe not. I don't bounce off the ground like I used to. Riders ready, pedal set. Here they go. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's close. <laughs> oh, very good. Too much weight. <laughs> See, told you I don't bounce. <laughs> that shoulder, it's still giving me grief. Now the kicker ramp is going to be made out of plywood and I've got this massive sheet here which is way too big for what we actually need but it's all I could lay my hands on. Now I'm not going to bore you with all the details of the sizes, dimensions, tools you'll need and stuff like that. I'll list all of those down below so you can check those out at your own leisure if you need to. And if you entered my last competition in my last video where you could win one of these cracking little stud pop stud finders, I'll be drawing the winner a bit later on in this video, so make sure you stick around for that one. You could be the winner. The first job we need to tackle is we need to cut the sides for the kicker. And to do that, we're using the entire width of this sheet, which is 1200 millimeters or four feet wide. And the overall height of the kicker from the bottom to the top is going to be 300 millimeters or 12 inches. Righto, so we know that the height of our kicker is 300 millimeters or 12 inches from the bottom to the top. So if we can hook a tape over the end of our sheet and run that out until we get to the, let's have a look, the one meter line, which is just under 39 and a half inches. Now, if we can place a mark on that line just there, that's going to be the highest point of the ramp. And from that pencil mark, we then draw a straight line back to the corner of our sheet. And that's called the layback. And what that does is it stops the ramp from coming forward after you hit it. So it gives the ramp a bit of stability. And for the record, from that point to the edge of the sheet in a straight line is 200 millimeters, which is about a bee's left leg or a fly's fart under eight inches. Now the next step is probably the most critical of the whole build, and that's to make the curve for our ramp. The ramp's not going to be straight, it's going to have a curve on it, which is why it's called a kicker ramp. Now to make the curve for the ramp, you need to find something flexible. So if you can lay your hands on something like this three quarter inch PVC piping, that works really well, or even some timber trim, like this stuff here, that's also nice and bendy. So really any of those two, will do the trick nicely. Now to make the curve, we need to do this. I'll be using the PVC piping, and remember that mark right there, the highest part of our ramp? I want you to drive in a screw right there. Just like that, too easy. And then get your PVC pipe, place it hard up against it, and then drive in another screw just there. Just like that. Now, down to the other end. Now on the pointy end of the kicker, or the very front of the kicker, I've come back 40 millimeters, or about an inch and a half, and I've driven in that screw. And the reason for that is that we can place our conduit hard up against it, and then manipulate it to make our curve. Now the reason for it being there, and not on the point like you'd expect, is that if we did that, we would finish up with this nasty lip that you need to contend with as you approach the ramp. So by having the conduit against that screw, that transition becomes a little less severe. Now, of course, if you have a planer, you can always back that bottom edge off, which is what I'll probably do. But if you don't have one, don't panic, it'll still work. Now, with the conduit hard up against that screw down there, and in between the two screws up here, we can now manipulate it 
to make our curve. Now remember, this is a beginner's ramp. So we don't want that curve to be so severe that we finish up maiming the kids. Because after all, this is about building up their confidence. So I'm going to play around with this until I find the perfect curve. And then I'll just simply drive in a screw, which will hold that conduit in place. And then you can just simply mark it with your pencil. Too easy. I reckon that looks pretty good. With everything now marked out, it's time to cut those sides. Now, for this curved section, you'll need a jigsaw for that job. And for the layback down this end, you can either use your jigsaw, but personally, I'm using my circular saw because I can cut straighter with that one. But if you don't have a circular saw, don't worry about it. Just use the old jiggy. Now can I just say when using a jigsaw, the trick is just to take your time, breathe nice and slowly, and just follow that line. So there you have it, that's that side cut. Now all you need to do is to spin that around and we'll use this as a template for the second side. Now you'll also notice that I've marked a line across here. Just simply line this up with that line and then just trace around it and cut it out. Too easy. Now you'll also notice that I'm trying to use as little material as possible. That way down the track I'll have enough left over to build another ramp if I need to. Now just a quick tip before we go any further, when we're cutting out that bottom edge on the second side, which is that line there, ignore that one, to get a nice straight cut, simply use a level or a straight piece of wood and you can clamp that down on either end and then run the fence of the saw, which is that bit there, up against the edge of the level and that'll produce a nice straight line. And also, to stop any burring or potential burring when you're cutting ply, if you can put the level against that line, just like that, and then with a Stanley knife or a utility knife, just give that a really good score, and that'll break the grain and hopefully prevent some of that burring. But if you don't want to do that, don't. Now after that last cut, you can see that because we scored it with a utility knife or a Stanley knife, there's very little burring, which is unusual for plywood because it normally burrs like there's no tomorrow. So that's really good as it gives a much nicer finish. Since we're talking about bikes and all that sort of stuff, just a quick side note. I was having a bit of a whingy the other day to my neighbor about how my dog would chase anyone on a bicycle. Yeah, yeah, true story. So he asked me what I was doing about it, and I told him that I had to take away his bike. <laughs> Get it? He's a, he's a dog that uh, rides a bike and chases people on it, so it's, it's a bit unusual. I'll see myself out. So after all that cutting, this is what we finish up with. And I tell you what, it's looking pretty good. Now, big tip, if you're a bit of a slacker, and you like to leave your stuff outside overnight, you might want to upgrade to a marine grade plywood, which is more suitable for outdoor use. Personally, I'm telling my 10 year old, this is coming in at night. We'll see if that happens. But regardless of that, I'll be applying a finish to this, so things should be okay. All right, it's now time to screw this thing together, so we need to make a frame. And I've got some 90 by 35, or four by one and a half, that's treated, so it's suitable for outdoor use. But you could also use 70 by 35, which is 3 by one and a half, and do the same thing. And I'll also be cutting those to a length of 400 millimeters, which I think is about 15 and three quarters of an inch, approximately. If you don't have a miter saw to cut these bits, a hand saw will do the trick. 
Righto, all the pieces have now been cut for the frame, but I have done something a little bit different. Initially, these were all 90 by 35s or 4 by one and a halfs, but to save some weight, I've decided to cut an inch off all of those. So now we have 70 by 35s or 3 by one and a halfs. And I think I'll even apply a coat of exterior grade paint to all of those cut edges just for a bit of added protection. Beautiful. Now one thing to note, and is totally optional, you don't need to do this, is that I've cut a 12 degree angle on that top piece, and that will follow that angle there. And the reason for that is that I want to screw a piece of ply to the front that's going to run all the way down, and I need something flat for this to screw into. And I'll be doing the same down below, but this time I'll be cutting a 45 degree angle on that piece so it sits flat on the ground. Now that's going to give us a bigger area for us to screw our ply to and also offer greater support for that plywood. Now like I said earlier, this is purely optional. You don't need to do it if you don't feel confident or you don't have the equipment. You can still screw in place an uncut piece, you'll just have a bit of a gap down there which is no real biggie. Now before I screw down that top, I think I'll do a quick run through just to show you exactly how this whole thing goes together so that when you go to make yours, it's going to be that little bit easier. Now down below, you can see all the bits and bobs and where they go. And if you're making yours a similar size to mine, I've got some measurements that you can follow. Now they're in metric, sorry about that, but I'll leave a converter down below for you to check out. So from the back, we go up 75 millimeters, then our batten, a gap of 11 centimeters, then a batten, 11 centimeters, batten, 11, batten, 11, batten, and 11. And once you get all those screwed in, you are good to go. So without further ado, let's go ahead and screw down that top. Now for the top of the ramp, all I've done is I've measured the overall width of the kicker and then added half an inch to either side. And that's going to give a bit of extra protection from the weather on those two top edges, which are prone to absorbing water. Now, I'm not quite sure whether you can see this or not, but if I bring the top down, I've come back about three inches from the bottom and then planed that down to about half the thickness of the original sheet. And that means that the transition going up the ramp is going to be a little bit smoother. And screwing down the top can be a bit tricky. So to make that easier, all I've done is I've cut half inch blocks and I've nailed those to either side, down the bottom and the same up the top. And the distance between those blocks is the overall width of our kicker. So all you need to do is to simply turn that over. That'll lock the top in place making it so much easier to screw down. Beautiful. Now, if you want your kicker ramp to stand out from your mates, pull out the trusty old jigsaw and cut in a sweet looking design. Give it a really good sand to get rid of all those rough edges and then pimp it up by adding a few image transfers for extra interest. And I'll link to a video below where you can learn how to do that if you're interested. And then you can finish the beast off by applying a couple of coats of clear exterior grade varnish or polyurethane. So after all that hard yakka, this is how it turned out. And I have to say, it looks absolutely fantastic. I love that Trek logo and all those screws, they line up nicely, which is good. And I think that the detail there makes this ramp look really cool. Now, if we come down to the end, you can see where I've tapered off that bottom there. That'll give us a smoother transition going up that ramp. And you didn't see this earlier, but I've added this piece there for added support for that end. Now, if we come along this way, I did the same thing. I want to cut this out. It became a bit floppy, 
but this support here, fix that up, no worries at all. Now, come down to the end. You can see how I've rounded off those corners. That looks good. Got a nice transition there, going up the ramp. And then if we come around this side, it's basically the same, but I've got that Scott logo. I love my Scott. Now, around the front here, I box that in for a bit of added support. And I think, in the words of my kids, this is a totally sick looking ramp. I love it. Now, unfortunately, I can't take this out for a spin because over the past week, it's been absolutely pouring down cats and dogs. So we haven't been able to get out, which has been a real pain in the bum. Now, for those out there who are eager to find out the winner of my last competition to win one of these cracking little stud pop stud finders, I've got my random comment selector gizmo here. So if I just pick a winner, here we go, drum roll. And the winner is, let's have a look, Danny Gillespie. Now, Danny, congratulations, Danny. You have won the stud pop stud finder. If you can contact me via one of my socials, you'll find that in the description box down below. I'll organize shipping as soon as possible. Well done, mate. Now, if you wanna see more videos like the one you've just watched, including how to build an awesome grind box for your BMX bike or skateboard, I'll leave a link to a couple of videos which should be popping up over there very shortly. Alrighty, well I hope you enjoyed and found that video useful, and if you did, a big thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Okay, and after all that, I think I need a cup of tea. So till next time, be good, be safe, and I'm out of here. Cheers.